this is part two of the Macintosh SE30 to Quadra Raspberry Pi upgrade and the cases came out absolutely great. Now look at this little vinyl sticker I got down here. Yeah, I got about 50 of these off Redbubble for like five bucks. Oh uh, yeah, let's look over here and we can see a minuscule amount of paint that's missing off the emblem, a couple of scratches in the logo, but oh man, take a look at those cases. They came out great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the right side. Oh yeah, look at that. Love that color. But I do have a couple of gripes. Uh, the e-recycler tried to repair this even after I paid for it. Um, they broke into it. I have no idea why. They tried to use a screwdriver to separate the cases. Um, if you look over here, they did it all along the seam, a couple of places at the top. Never use a screwdriver or even one of those Mac crackers to take apart these compact Macs. Absolutely not necessary. Let's look at the rear. And, oh yeah, that came out great. Let's take a look at the uh, selector switch. And if you look, we can put it all the way over to the right to use the Raspberry Pi. Center position is going to be for using the uh, media display. And then all the way to the left is to use the Mac. All right, let's look at the PDS port. And that came out pretty darn good. Look at that. Oh, yeah. And then we have our USB 2.0 input for our media display. And you can also use that as a power port, which we'll talk about later. So let's look at the bottom where I spliced in that 605 plate, and that came out great. Look at that, man. Ah, oh, yeah. Board fix is great. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the left side. Ah. Oh. And then ah, there's a couple of scratches. Nothing big. But still, that looks beautiful. All right. And here we have a keyboard that I purchased online, and according to the description, it was clean and tested. Wow. I don't want to even venture a guess as to what that crap is. All right, let's clean it up. And here I put the cases through the dishwasher. They came out really well. And then for the anchor plate for the keys, I used probably about 1,000 milliliters of uh, 1,000, or, <laughs> excuse me, 91% isopropyl alcohol, probably about 200 Q-tips, and it cleaned up well after about four hours. Uh, the keys went through the wash also, and they cleaned up well <laughs> with a lot of shaking. All right, and here it is, all put together. Ah, uh, would you look at that color? That came out really well. Yeah, look at the bottom. Oh, that is just super clean. Oh, yeah. That is such a great match for the SE30. Now, somehow, uh, in between the walk from the dishwasher to my workbench, I ended up missing uh, three keys. That's why you see those three. They're a little bit off yellow, but that's okay. I had a bunch of uh, extras that are floating around the shop, uh, so probably a couple hundred. Now, I'm going to use this with the Macintosh, and I'm going to use it with the Raspberry Pi. To use it with the Macintosh, of course, that's a no-brainer. All you're going to do is you're going to take your ADB cable, and you're going to plug it in your keyboard, and you're going to plug the other end into your Quadra. But to use it with the Raspberry Pi, we are going to need the Wombat from Steve Chamberlain over at Big Missile Wires. Highly recommend you uh, go ahead and check out his store. He's got a lot of neat stuff. Now, there are several adapters that are out there on the market, but this is my favorite one. I've never had any problems uh, uh, using this. It's bi-directional. You can go ahead and use an old Macintosh ADB keyboard with a modern computer uh, with USB input. Or you can go ahead and use a, a modern USB keyboard with the uh, older Macintosh with ADB. And here you can see the ADB input and our USB output. And how you select the uh, input and outputs is by moving this jumper on the board. All right, so we plug in our USB cable. And then we're going to go ahead and plug in our ADB cable, which is going to be leading from our keyboard. And then we plug the USB cable into the Raspberry Pi. Okay, let's fire up the Pi. We'll go ahead and switch it all the way over to the right and turn on our power. Now, for the input, the video input is not automatic, so you're going to have to select it usually whenever the, um, you turn the machine on. And the input, video input for the Raspberry Pi is HDMI. Now, let's go ahead and speed this up until we get to the desktop. Ah, <laughs> look at that. Mouse works perfect. Let's go ahead and test out the keyboard. And we'll go ahead and go to LibreOffice. And it takes about 15 seconds to open, test out the keyboard, and it works super. Look at that. Okay, let's go ahead and shut her down. Uh, we've already seen it browse the internet. Now, remember, with the Raspberry Pi, there is no soft power off with ATX power supply. You have to manually turn it off. Now, to use as a media display, we go ahead and get our USB media stick, plug it in, 
go ahead and go and switch it to the center position and hit our power. Now the uh, video input is media. Okay, now we're, we're to that. Let's go ahead and speed it up a little bit. Let's go to movie. Ah, let's watch a blockbuster. This is my favorite film. Doom, doom, doom. Ah, <laughs> I like that. Ah, let's uh, adjust that aspect ratio. That looks kind of drawn out, doesn't it? So we go to menu, and we go to 4-3. Oh, yeah, that's much better. All right, let's go ahead and turn this off, and let's use the Macintosh. Go ahead and unplug our Wombat, since we don't need that anymore. And we plug our ADB cable into the Quadra ADB port. Remove the media stick, switch it all the way over to the left for Mac, turn on the power. Video input is going to have to be PC. Okay, now let's speed this up. It usually takes about, uh, oh, I don't know, 70, 80 seconds for it to boot to the uh, Macintosh desktop. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Oh, I love that uh, color on that screen. Okay, there we can see our four SCSI drives on the desktop, SCSI to SD, SD formatted card, and I have uh, Toast, CD burning software installed, uh, Stuff It Deluxe. All right, let's go to about this Mac, and we look, and there are 132 megabytes of RAM. All right, so let's go ahead and shut this down, and let's go ahead and jump over to the System 8.1 System Profiler and see what it says. And there we can see that it is a Macintosh 470 series board, Quadra 605, same thing. Oh, yeah. You know what? Let's go ahead and go to the uh, TCP control panel, and let's see if they can see our Ethernet card. And there it is. <laughs> okay. Well, let's go ahead and shut this down, and let's go ahead and plug a couple of uh, peripherals in here so we can go ahead and do some CD burning and do a little bit of Internet browsing. Just like the Raspberry Pi, remember the Quadra 605 does not have soft power off for the ATX. We have to manually flip off the main power switch. And there, plugged in a SCSI port, you can see the cable, and it leads up to this. Now what I did was I took a standard uh, Apple drive that I had that was broken, uh, swapped out the unit for a uh, Panasonic CDR4X CD burner. Yeah, it came out really good. And then I have this wireless module from Vonitz. We plug the Ethernet in into the uh, Ethernet card and then for the power we're going to go ahead and utilize the display port USB 2.0 port. Oh yeah. Now <clears throat> this is a bare unit. Uh, I got this for like I think it was 25 bucks off eBay. Had it shipped from Taiwan. But uh, you can also get the uh, normal uh, versions of these. They come in that little purple casing. I think they're called the VP300. Bonnets VP300. I got the bare one because I'm going to go ahead and put this inside of a uh, empty modem housing. So we go ahead and power up our computer again. Go ahead and select our browser. I'm using iCab. That is so much better than Internet Explorer or even uh, Netscape. Uh, now we get on here and what I found is Go to Google, do a search for software we can down download. And uh, it used to be you could get on the Macintosh Garden or the Macintosh Repository with the 68K based machines. But, uh, well, I found out you, you can't do it anymore. So I went through and I did a search uh, for about uh, 20 minutes. And the only site I could come up with that still has software that you can access with a 68K machine with uh, Ethernet is the Mac Fixer website. Uh, they've got the uh, old uh, uh, legacy operating systems, a couple of utilities, a couple of games. But, uh, yeah, that's it. It looks like they're the last one standing. Um, I don't know. Maybe uh, there are some more out there. And if you know of any more, please go ahead and feel free to contact me. And I'll go ahead and uh, update the description below and add those uh, links in there. So let's go ahead and exit our browser and let's go to the desktop because I want to go ahead and burn a CD. I have a Toast 4.0 installed. Now Toast was a really big deal back then because it would recognize so many third-party burners um, that the Apple uh, native burning software didn't. Actually I don't think 8.1 had any native burning software until like 8.5 or 8.6. So let's go ahead and go to that. Bum -ba -dum -ba -dum. 
and let's see if it recognizes our burner. It should. And yeah, there it is, Panasonic. All right, let's go ahead and get out of this. I want to go to the uh, system profiler and see what it says. And so we go up there, and there it is. Goes the ID number five, but it doesn't say CDR. Huh. Okay, I burned this 40 speed CDR using a modern Linux machine. I had to burn it at 8x. That is the only way it's going to be able to be read in the older burner. And there it is. It showed up on our desktop. So we're going to go ahead and open that up. And we're going to drag some files over to that folder. And now we're going to go ahead and get an 8x uh, CD. This is the fastest media that you can use in these older burners. They're very finicky. You can still get them on eBay. Okay, let's go ahead and drag our files over to Toast. Go ahead and open up the burning session. And let's go ahead and burn that disk. It goes through it and bam. You know what that means, right? That means our little 68 LC040 processor does not have enough horsepower to burn the disk. So we'll go ahead and insert another disk. Let's go ahead and try 2x. Yeah, we had 4x before, and that's where our problem came in. And then, ah, uh, come on, come on, come on. Yep, it did it. It, it burned it. Okay, now we're going to do a verification on the disk. And come on, come on, and it passed. Okay. Well, I'm going to go ahead and conclude the video. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I think that this came out really, really well. Um, yeah. Now, if I do another one of these in the future, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick with the iPad screen. I think that makes a lot of difference. And that is just a beautiful Macintosh. Oh, uh, yeah. No way around it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, please, come back again and hit that subscribe button. Oh, one last thing I forgot. Make sure you make a kid's day and you take them fishing. Good night.